Johann Baptist Metz. Metz has one of the most tragic and touching stories regarding his relationship to the Holocaust. He was drafted into the army and while he was out delivering a message, the whole rest of his crew was hit by a bomb and he found them all dead. He was only 16 years old when this happened and so the Holocaust for him was something that really shook his whole worldview. It wasn't something he could ever get over. And so he started doing theology simply as a way to make sense of what had happened to him and how he survived and how he should think about his friends now that they're gone. Metz comes to a different conclusion about God than Moltmann and Soleil do. He uses a metaphor to explain why he wants to insist that God actually is all-powerful. He doesn't critique God's omnipotence in the way Moltmann and Soleil do. Metz says, imagine you're stuck in a hole and you have no way to get out. It's too high for you to be able to climb. He says Moltmann and Soleil seem to think that the way God could best love us is to come down into the hole with us, to suffer alongside us, and to understand what we're going through as a person stuck in a hole. Well, Matt says that that makes sense to a degree. We are comforted when people accompany us in that way, but wouldn't it be more helpful if God were outside the hole? If God could instead maybe drop down a ladder so that we can actually climb out of the hole. Metz worries that Moltmann and Soleil eternalize suffering by putting God in suffering, by allowing God to suffer, even if God chooses that suffering, suffering becomes something eternal like God is. Metz would rather imagine a God that gives us a hope for something different. Hope for something, someplace, someone who is not touched by suffering, who can pull us out of suffering, and who can help us leave it behind permanently. God is all-powerful for Metz, and for Metz that doesn't contradict being all-good or all-loving. In fact, it's what gives us hope that something actually can be all-good. God's power means that there is a way to leave suffering and death behind. Metz further elaborates on his position through two central concepts, dangerous memory and lament. Dangerous memory is how he deals with those people who have already suffered and died, such as his comrades in the war. He says we should not forget those who have suffered. We should remember who they were, how they suffered, how they died. That memory should shape us and how we act in the world. That's what makes the memory dangerous. When you remember it, it forces you to change your life and find ways to work for justice. At the same time, we should hope that tragedy will not ultimately have the last word. Even though someone may have been killed unjustly, there might still be more to come. Of course, we should not act as if a greater good makes up for suffering. There's no afterlife that makes the suffering on earth worth it for Mets. But there is still a hopefulness that there can be some sort of healing. For Metz, it's never going to be about just moving on and living your best life. Our grief over injustices should be something that continues to shape us and move us towards justice. The concept of lament comes straight from the Bible, when Jesus was on the cross and cried out, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? That was a lament. But we can actually find examples of that sort of prayer all throughout the Bible. And it can seem a little strange when you first think about it. Why ask God where God is? Why try to remind God to be loving? Doesn't God already know those things? If God was going to intervene, wouldn't God have done so by now? The point of lament is not really to change God's mind, but rather to express your faith through continuing to ask the question of suffering. By continuing to ask God, where are you? Why am I suffering? Lament becomes an active hope. If you've given up hope, you also stop asking the question. You stop asking where God is if you really believe there is no God. But by asking why God has abandoned us, it's an act of faith. It's an act of saying, even though I have no evidence, 
Even though I can't see God, and even though I can't understand how an all-powerful, all-good, all-knowing God could allow this to happen right now, I'm holding out hope that one day I might get an answer. One day God might reappear. One day God might show me that this story is not all there is. Metz is the only Catholic theologian of the three we've studied, and he passed away fairly recently in fall of 2019 at the age of 91. What I love about Metz is his vision of hope that compels us to keep going, to keep remembering, and to keep searching for God, while at the same time, his hope challenges us to take suffering seriously and to take our participation in society seriously. Hopefully, at least one of these theologians has stood out to you. Perhaps you heard their conception of God and you're like, yeah, that makes sense to me, or that's intriguing, or I've never thought about it that way, but I want to think about that more. Those are all good reactions.